Good morning, everybody. Okay, we're going to talk about custom kitchen planning. And I've prepared a few slides uh, to just kind of give you a little background that I've used in the past. So let me go ahead and share my screen with you. And uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to talk about custom kitchen planning. Okay, so I hope you can see it. And you know, custom kitchen planning, and I have it kind of over here. Let me see if I can move it so I'm not looking to the side and you don't see the side of my face. Let me see if I can do this. You know, can't move it. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna look this way, how's that? Anyway, um, I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about how to use the chart, um, how to use the tally sheet, and how to create different rooms using the modular mates and those different areas. So let's go on. And this is not a PowerPoint, so I, have, I do have to move it. Okay, so what we wanna talk about when we talk about custom kitchen planning is how cost, modular mates, there we go, uh, save time, space, and money. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna sort of analyze the, the client's kitchen. And of course, that's much easier if we are in their kitchen. Uh, but in today's world right now, we're going to be doing this virtually. And what we wanna do is create systems using our modular mates. Um, or, or centers using the modular mates. Um, the service is free from us. The only cost to our, cons our customer is the cost of the containers. And of course we make our regular 25% profit on these. So let's go on. So we wanna talk about selling in centers. And even when I demonstrate modulars, I like to talk about the different centers. And so there's, a, there's five centers. There's the pasta bean and rice. There's the baking center. There's a snack center. And there's a beverage center and a breakfast center. And if you want to take it a little, a little further, I like to sometimes add a convenience center. And depending upon what my client has, I may even add something. I did a center for a, a lady who had a lot of vitamins, um, a lot of mineral things that she took every day. And so we organize those together. And then I've also done spice centers. So I organize the spices. And I can tell you a little bit about that as we move on. Okay, so let's go on. So how do I date a custom kitchen? And you know how you date a custom kitchen is the same as how you date a, whether you're doing a party in person or you're doing a party online, you're going to talk about it. If you don't talk about it, you won't date it. I can promise you that. And so you want to talk about it. I like to show a center. Probably one of the most popular centers will be your baking center for many people. Um, some people don't bake at all. So the snack center is always a big one. And then pasta bean and rice is always big. So you wanna talk about that. I do talk about that, you know, custom kitchens is a specialty that I do when I have time. Parties are my business, but uh, when I have time, I do do cupboards for free. The only cost to you is the, pro is the cost of the containers that you, that you purchase. Um, and then I'd be happy to put you on my list and we can set a date. Um, and if I'm super busy, sometimes I say, when I have time, I'll give you a call and we'll set it up. Of course, I always have time, don't I? Anyway, um, but for my hosts, I always offer to do, an, when I did regular Tupperware parties in person, I would go early to that party. Um, sometimes it would be a day early or a couple of days early. Um, that was probably the best way. Um, but sometimes it was just a few hours early. It depended upon where the party actually was. In today's world, I would arrange to do a virtual uh, custom kitchen with her early before her party so that she could take advantage of our host program uh, uh, in terms of getting modular mates as a host offer, whether it, there's a set being offered by Tupperware as there is today, or whether they would use it as their uh, half price item or as their free products. So um, I always want to go ahead and do my host kitchen ahead of time so that she knows what it is that we're going to be selecting for her kitchen or and I do too. Okay, so the next thing is, is that um, kitchens aren't the only, in homes aren't the only places that we do custom kitchens. I've done boats, uh, my own personal boat. I've done other people's boats. I've done RVs. We did an RV show uh, many years ago and we went out and we did their kitchens and their RVs. It's wonderful because of the fact that they don't have to restock every time with fresh food. They can keep their flour, their sugar. They can, um, you know, they can, they can keep their staples on board whether that's their, their RV or whether that is their boat. Um, and still some people have their fifth wheels or campers, I think they're still called, that, they can, that we can do kitchens with. 
Um, you can gift kitchens. So you might want to paint a picture of the kids going together and giving mom a, or dad or mom and dad a gift certificate towards a custom kitchen. So much in, in dollar amount, just like you would give any gift certificate. And uh, they could put that towards that custom kitchen. They would, of course, would pay you and they would redeem that with you. Uh, so that's a lot of fun. Um, it can be a birthday gift. It could be a Mother's Day gift. It could be a wedding or a shower gift. I did a, a custom kitchen for a new bride. Her mom gave her a custom kitchen as a wedding gift and I went in and helped her do her kitchen before she got married. So that was a lot of fun. It can of course be a Christmas gift and a Father's Day gift if dad is the cook in the family or it could be a dad's birthday. So think about gifting kitchens as well. And if you don't talk about these things, people won't think about these things. So you have to talk about them if you want to date them. All right. So what we're going to do is there is a custom kitchen planning chart. And um, at my parties in all of my packs, when I'm doing a, a traditional party, I always have modular made information in there. When I am doing a virtual party, then I would post that. So I would post, if, especially with a modular made party, I would post the chart so that people could download it and print it out. And uh, we have a food list, which I will show you. And um, I would go ahead and I would make sure that they have that and let them know that we're going to be talking about doing their cupboards and they may want to take inventory of their cupboards and how much they keep on hand. Sometimes I play a game with that. And uh, I, I give a gift to the person who has the, the, uh, the most expensive um, cupboard or the most items in their cupboard. And uh, so I would play a game with it sometimes. And, and sometimes we can multiply it times. And I'll show you how we all multiply it times an average container. And then I, I show them that much they could save by taking advantage of the sales that we offer in January, if that's the time that I'm doing that. Um, so I have them check off the foods that they keep in their cupboard and circle the ones that they already have in Modular Mates because my goal is not just to sell them more containers, but my goal is to sell them containers that they're going to use as well as use the containers that they already have in their home. Okay, all right, so let's move on. So what I do is that I do not uh, give credit for the custom kitchen on the party unless we are ordering it at the time of the party. Okay, so I do, this is where I do the kitchen before the party because I can't, once the, the party is closed, the party is closed. So she would need to order the kitchen as a part of her host offer, as a part of her party before I could give her credit. Okay, so it's important that, that they're aware of that, that once the party is closed, if they decide to order the kitchen afterwards, I can't go back and give them any host credit. And I know you know that. Um, if they purchase the entire kitchen, then in a regular world where I can go and I could go to their home, I will help them install that kitchen. And you know, this is a personal choice at this time in our lives. Uh oh, I have somebody who is um, oh, <laughs> playing with a toy. Anyway, um, this is a choice at their time in your time in your life as to whether or not you would want to actually go and help install that kitchen for your host. So um, you'll want to make that decision, but I don't install it if they don't purchase the entire kitchen. In a virtual kitchen, I wouldn't be offering to install it at all. There's several ways that they can purchase a kitchen. They can buy half now and half later. So again, only the per part that is purchased during the Tupperware party time frame would be what they could get credit for uh, towards a host gift and free modular mates. Um, they could do, so half now, half later, they could purchase a center at a time. So they could do that. Um, and so what I do is I make out a sheet, an order form as it would be um, for each of the centers, if that's what they choose to do, or half now, half later, and uh, or the entire kitchen. And I do keep those in my possession. I do not leave those with my client or send them to my client via email because it's just like my interior designer who comes and helps me select uh, carpet or furniture upholstery. Um, I don't get all the ordering information and where they're ordering it from and all of that information. She keeps that information because that's how she makes her money or he makes her money. And then if I am doing a center at a time or I'm doing half now, half later, we de decide upon when that's going to be ordered and when, and I, I do have a credit card on file and I do go ahead and I process that order. So um, that's really important. And of course, whatever it is that I'm ordering ahead of time, if we're doing half now, half later or a center at a time, I get payment before I order. So it's just the same as a regular Tupperware uh, purchase. All right, let's go on. 
Okay, so understanding the system, I believe that we've, you know, you want to make sure that they understand that it is modular and that in our, um, in our cupboards, and this is uh, something that I will be doing is a how the system works demo for you. I'm not going to do it in this. This is just really information, but that they, you know, the ovals and the, the squares uh, fit easily on top of each other. Um, a square and an oval will fit on a rectangular. A super oval will fit on a rectangular. And uh, so that I can mix and match, we call them Legos for ladies, and I can mix and match those so that I can create centers and I can use all different sizes of containers to create the organized pantry that they're looking for. Um, primarily, most people in today's world, unless they live in an older home, they're going to use mostly super ovals and recs because they take up the entire depth of the pantry shelf as opposed to the squares and the, and the ovals, which are shorter. So which leaves you room behind. And I don't like to stack modulars behind each other because it makes it more difficult for them to find it. So I do like to do it that way. And of course, I want them to understand that the features and the benefits are the clear viewing band in the very front of the modular mate makes it easy to see when they're running out of, of, of food so that when they do their... I'm sorry, I have a puppy who is um, a little upset that there's a cat outside. So Zoe, stop that, stop, okay. Anyway, so I do go ahead and I do show them how it will use the entire depth of the, the pantry. Zoe, stop. Max, stop. Give me that. No. No, all of you. The other thing that I like to make sure that my clients know is that if they like to scoop, then they're really going to want to look at the rectangulars and the squares. If they like to pour, then of course the super ovals with the pour all seals or the ovals with the pour all seals are perfect. So there will be instances where we'll be scooping things such as flour and sugar and the obvious oatmeal. I like to, I don't like to pour oatmeal, I like to scoop it. And so, uh, but many people like to pour. So, you know, it will be different for different people. So I do want to make sure that my client understands how the system works together. And that's part of my demo at my parties. So if I'm going into someone's home or if I'm doing this virtually, I'm going to need at least her food out of her pantry in terms of one shelf that is representative of most of her shelves. Now, if we're using multiple cupboards, then I'm gonna need one shelf because we're gonna want to measure that shelf and she may want to be able to get inside the shelf and actually measure inside so that I can get those measurements for her or from her. Um, if I'm at her home, I ask that they take all their food out of their pantry and then I simply use the modular mates as my measurement to see how many rectangles wide or ovals wide squares wide, of course a square and a, and a rectangular are the same width. Um, and two super ovals are the same width as two ovals. So um, I will be, or a rectangular, but I, I will use the product as my measuring feature as opposed to a tape measure. In today's world right now, doing a kitchen virtually, which is really a great tool because this means I could do someone's kitchen that lives you know, hours or states away from me and I could help them and order the products in. So doing it virtually is really a good idea is learning how to do this. And you know, it's gonna be a little awkward the first time you do it. I remember the first kitchen I did, I was petrified um, because I'd never done it before. So that's why I suggest that if you haven't done your own kitchen, that you get your own kitchen done first so that you have that experience. And then the second thing that you do is you ask a friend, someone that you think might buy a kitchen if you did it with them. And you ask a friend if you could come over if you're going to do it in person or virtually with them so that you would have that experience. 
So I like to do that. So I also ask them to get all their modulars out that they already own, even if they have food in them, so I can see what it is that they have so that we can work them. And oftentimes I find that the modulars that they have in their kitchens, um, we need to downsize or upsize because there it may not be the right product for that food, the way that they store their food, but they, they just dumped it into one of the modular mates to get it into a container. So um, I do sometimes have to rearrange that, but that's okay. We can do that. And uh, then I also make sure that they have a food list or a storage chart so that they can mark the different foods that they keep on hand. And my number one question when doing a kitchen with someone is, do they like to scoop or do they like to pour? My other question is the seal color. I tell them to select a seal color that they like, not one that just goes in their kitchen because they may change their kitchen, but they won't change what they like. And so I do ask them to do that. And then the other thing that I ask them to do is, or I ask the question is, is this the amount that you typically keep on hand? Um, do you always keep 10 pounds of flour on hand? Do you always buy two pounds of brown sugar? You know, what is it that you do? So that I know that the container that we're selecting is the right container, not just what they happen to have on hand when I do the custom kitchen. And lastly, I like to find out, do they want to be completely out before they refill their container? Um, I am, will dump on top. My husband, no, no, no. We had to empty the container, wash the container, and then we filled it up. So everybody does it a little bit differently. And so whatever works best for them, and that's what you want to find out. I also like to know if they're the only one that cooks in the kitchen, because in my family, my husband was the primary cook. I was the um, chief um, dish and bottle washer, washer. I was the, the sous chef, I was the helper. And so if I were to move things around in the kitchen, he wouldn't be real happy with me. He would want to know that where where the, 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 the spices were, that they were always there, where the pasta was, it was where he knew where to find it. So, you know, that's an important thing that I find is who cooks in the kitchen? Do you both cook? If we move things around a little bit, is that gonna create a problem? So that's just one of the side things that you kind of do more when you're in their kitchen, as opposed to virtual. Okay, so if I'm doing a modular mate party, I want to create sets. And so I create a small set and my small set price is typically around 50 to $60. Um, and I'm usually using the ovals and the, because they're a little less expensive or maybe just a few of our super ovals, just a, a smaller set, 50 or $60. And I work it out based on the prices in the catalog at the time. My medium set will usually be closer to $100, $75, $80, $90. And then my large set, is almost always $125, $150 set. And then I create an I gotta get it all set. So that would include my small set, my medium set and my large set. And then um, I also have a spice set. If Tupperware is offering the spice shakers, then I will offer that. Um, oftentimes too, when we're running sales, I will use oval ones for people, oval ones and oval twos for people who buy spices in bulk to get those, those containers out of their cupboard because they're not stackable. And so I can, I have done cupboards where I do a complete spice cupboard and we use the spice shakers for those smaller amounts to use every day, but we use the ovals, the oval one and oval two, especially when they're on sale for the bulk spices that they purchase. So that's always really great. So what I find is that most people don't just want to buy the small set and they're not always going to buy the large set. So they buy the medium set. And, and that's where I want that price point to be a little bit bigger. So the small set sells the medium and the large set sells the medium. So that usually is my most popular um, set, okay? And when they purchase a gotta get it all set at a Tupperware party with me, because gotta get it all set is usually mm, a couple hundred, three hundred dollars. And I do say that when you purchase the gotta get it all set, because that gives me some modulars to work with, that I will install their kitchen in a regular in a regular world. So if we're back out meeting people and going into homes, and I don't know when that will be, this is 2020, uh, then um, I would be offering that as an incentive to purchase that great big set. And I've certainly had a lot of people purchase it because I offered to come and help them install. And the bonus to that is that they find that they need more modulars than what they just purchased in the Gotta Get It All set. So the average kitchen usually is around $600, depending upon the amount of food that they they keep on hand. Okay, so let's move on. And so this is the uh, custom kitchen chart. 
And you'll notice that it's, it's broken down. It shows you the different sizes that we have, okay? The super ovals, the ovals, the rectangulars, and the squares, and of course the spaghetti dispenser because we don't have rounds all the time. And then it's broken down into the centers. So the, the baking center, the pasta bean and rice center, and then it's replicated again with the products, but we've got the snack center. See how big that snack center is? And then we also have the beverage center. So the other centers you kind of have to put together based on what's in their kitchen. So this is something that is like a Bible to me because I don't keep everything on this, on this chart in my kitchen. And so if I just went by what I kept in my kitchen, I wouldn't really know. And so I, I use this chart all the time and I make sure that my hostess or my, my client has this chart as well. The next chart that I have is a, um, the graphing chart. Okay, so this is the graph, and this is the one that we used at fall or winter fast, so you could see. So you'll see what happens is that as you see right here, let me see if I don't, let me see if I can use a point. Well, I will in the next slide. So th this is an oval. This would be a super oval or an oval. This would be a rectangular one. This would be a rectangular. This would be a square. Okay, this could be your square because a square and a rectangular are the same width. They don't have the same depth, but they have the same width. An oval and a super oval have the same width, but not the same depth as well. And so if I were graphing this, this looks to me like this is a super oval three and uh, she's got salt, pink salt. This is a super oval three and she has seasoning packets in it. Okay, that's personal preference. Uh, this is a super oval two with beans, a super oval two with uh, uh, pepper. So this is a rectangular and super oval shelf. Okay, this is the depth of the shelf. I can tell that by the measurements and the measurements are over here. I'll show you a blank one in a minute. And then this location is left of the sink. Okay, then, so she's using all super ovals in here. And then here's a rec two for her flour, which is the workhorse of the kitchen, I gotta tell you. Here's a rec one with granulated sugar, a rec one with brown sugar, a rec one with powdered sugar, a rec three with cake mixes. So what they've done is you take the cake mixes out of the box, you write on the package what it is. It's a chocolate cake mix, it's a angel food cake mix, whatever. And then you cut the back of the boxes off and there's a couple of things that you can do. Some people put them inside the container. I don't recommend that because I, I know having a warehouse with Tupperware, we used to have a bug sprayer come in and spray because things happen in, in uh, trucks when they're shipping across country. And I'm sure that the warehouses do the same thing. I would think that they do um, in uh, the food store in, you know, like grocery stores. So um, what I did is I took a, a, a loose leaf note, a three ring binder, and I took uh, notebook pages and I taped in the back of the boxes on uh, the notebook tape. I have still have that binder today. So if I want to know how to make a cake mix out of Duncan Hines, I go to that that page. If I want to know how to do Uncle Ben's instant rice, I go to that page and that works well for me. But some people do like to put it down in the container. So again, it's personal preference. There's no right way. There's no wrong way. There's your way. All right. And uh, here she's got a super oval five with oatmeal. So this is somebody who likes to pour. So I would sit down with a blank one of these. And so you can see this is one modular unit. Okay. This is a, so this is a level one. This is level two, three, four, and five, okay? And some cupboards are sixes and sevens. So this doesn't refer to the product itself. This refers to the height of the shelf. So 18 inches would be a, a seven. If it's 15 and a half, that means you could go six high. So you could do a, a five and a one. You could do a, um, a three and a two and a one. So any combination that adds, remember the Legos, any combination that adds up to that, that, that six level. So this gives you the height of the shelf. This gives you the depth or the width of the shelf, okay? So again, this would be a rec. This would be an oval or a super oval. And so when I'm graphing the kitchen, let me see if I can do this. Uh, just like what you saw in the example, I would take my highlighter and I would draw it just like this. Then I would write, okay? And I can't write 
with my my pointer, my mouse right here, but I would write because I'd have this on my desk. I'd have a paper copy and I would write in here that this was a rec two, okay? And whatever it was that I was putting in there. And then I would maybe do the next one. Maybe I want to change colors and my next one, maybe it would be a super oval, to, oh, whoops. Whoop. Okay. It doesn't want to, here, we'll just do this. Okay. And then maybe this would be, so I'd write in there what this was. Maybe I change colors again. I come over here and now it's going to be a highlighter for me. And I'm going to do maybe another, another o, super oval here and whatever that might happen to be. I can keep it all the same color. I can do one color per baking center. I can do different colors for each um, container. So you'll notice that in the example that we have up here, she's blocked out the entire um, exterior, but what she's done is she's used a, a different color to designate the tops and the, the uh, division between the products. So again, it's personal preference how you want to do that, but you're going to use the custom kitchen graph. And so it tells you um, right here, rounds, let me get out of here. Okay, that rounds and super ovals or ovals are one block wide. So it tells you right there, you don't have to remember squares and rectangulars are two blocks. Minis need five inches of width or one block and rectangles or squares need eight inches of width or two blocks across. So it gives you all that information. So you can do a virtual kitchen very easily. Just need a little bit of math here, but not a lot. Okay, now this is the food list. And this is something that you can use as a, as a, um, a, a game at a party. And where I give this, I pass this out and I ask them to uh, write in here if they, um, so what I do is L, to put an L if it's two pounds or more that they keep on hand and an S if it's under two pounds. So they just quickly go through here and I keep a pound, I put an S for Bisquick, I keep an S for baking powder, baking soda. Maybe I do it by two pounds of brown sugar, so I do an L. And I, we're just simply doing this so that we get an idea, they can get an idea of what a kitchen would cost if I were doing this as a game at a party. And then we can take the average here. We use the average that anything that was two pounds or more, the average would be approximately $24 per container. Anything that was under um, two pounds would be approximately $14 per, per container. And it's just a ballpark. You can use different numbers if you want to. And I have them uh, write that out. And then what I do is I say, okay, so I've got a, a gift for the person that has the most, the most food, the most expensive kitchen, and, you know, has the most containers uh, with the highest number. And so I'll go, you know, uh, how many, how, who's got the most large containers? And they tell me, and I'll say, who's got the most small containers? And they tell me, and I give them a gift. And then I even go, who's got the least amount of containers? I go, oh, you don't cook very much. And uh, then I'll talk about who has the, the least amount of small containers and I go oh you must be a cook and I give gifts out for that then I ask him let's let's kind of take a ballpark and let's see what your uh, kitchen you know could run and I have a multiply it out so if they've got 10 containers at large that'd be 240 dollars 10 containers at small 140 so that would be what uh, 380 dollars that their kitchen would take and then I tell them okay I want you to cut that in half Cut that in half, take 50% off because right now in January, which we, when we have our modular sale and this year, 2021, it will be 50% off of our sets. And I will try to use as many sets as possible. Um, they're gonna get a 50% discount. And I say, you know, by doing your kitchen now in January, 2021, you can cut that number in half. So if you're interested in doing that, let's talk about it. Let's see about getting some of your centers on order. And I'll be showing those for you, you know, throughout the party today. And so I play a game with it. Um, I could also use this to send to my host. And it is two page. It is, um, there's this one, which is good for parties because it's a little bit easier to just see what you would keep in approximately in a baking center and a beverage center, snack center, breakfast center. There's a spice center as well. 
And, uh, but then this is the, probably one that's a little bit more complete. This is another uh, customer inventory that you could use when you're actually going to do the kitchen. So it's a little bit more work for them, but it, it actually gives them more information. And, you know, I could always sit on the phone with them or do a Zoom with them and I could fill it out if they tell me how much they use. So, you know, you can make this as personal as you want to, but you can see that we have lots of things in here. And here's seasoning packets and uh, doing a baking box. My baking box is all of my, spy, uh, my um, measuring spoons, my measuring cups, uh, my thermometers, um, my egg separator. So that's my baking box. Uh, and I use a Rec2 for that, as opposed to uh, going to heaven, having to paw through the drawers that you do. So I like doing that. And again, the medicines that I, I talked about, um, I like having, and I have one today. It has the decongestants in it. It has the band-aids in it. It has the thermometer in it. It has the... Um, uh, when my kids were little, the syrup of Ipecac in it, it has cough drops in it. So it has everything that would be, and I just pull it down a medicine box that I can do right there. Or it can also be uh, your vet, your vitamins. And I have one of those. So, so here's just a, some final tips. You want to use your custom kitchen planning chart. Um, we do have a Costco chart, which I will post for you. Squares and rectangular charts, we have them. And how, have them highlight the products and the sizes that they use and add any additional ones that are not on the list because people do keep different foods on the list, okay? Um, listen. Ask about the refills as I talked about. Ask them, do they prefer to organize by task or by usage? So again, beverage, what do you get into the most? I like doing centers. I don't like having them mixed up in the, in the pantry. I find that that's really disorganized and hard for them. So I almost always, I've never had a kitchen that I haven't done centers. Um, using the modular mates to uh, do the measuring if you're in person, otherwise you'll have to do inches if it's virtual. Uh, again, asking and listening to the questions that you ask, ask which do they to prefer to measure you for everything at their home, or would they like you to do, and of course, again, that's if you're in their home doing it virtually, we're gonna do it at our desk or our own kitchen table to get that ready for them. And then if they do a center at a time, making sure that you chart it out for them. So once that center is delivered, I then mail my chart so that they know how to organize it and set it up. And you'd be surprised, people are pretty smart. They can do it on their own. And you know they'll, they'll change it. They'll change it. Maybe they'll say, no, I don't like that over there, but I like it over here and it works. And that's okay. Remember, there's no right way. There's no wrong way. It's their way, okay? Because it's their kitchen. So, um, and then you want to schedule a time to do your own kitchen if you haven't already done that. So the other thing that you do want to talk about at your parties are creepy crawlers. And um, bugs are something that typically we don't, we don't create the bugs. They are hitchhikers and they come in from the grocery store or from those warehouses. And so I will post this, but it talks about pest control. It talks about weevils. Weevils come in, they're hitchhikers and they come in in your wheat products. They come in in your flour. They come in in your cereals. They come in in your pastas. And um, when I do the demonstration, I'll talk about how you know a pasta box is like a little jungle gym for for your little weevils and they come in and they go and they get into anything that is a wheat product and since they don't know where wheat is they go into everything and uh, I even had one time and I'll tell the story when I do a demonstration, but I tell this that I had a friend give me a basket with pancake mix and I threw it in my pantry and it sat there for a couple of months and I finally got around to doing something with it. And by that time I had weevils everywhere. Fortunately, everything was in Tupperware except Jello, which now goes into a Rec2. And I had um, uh, gelatin. Uh, for making jello salads and things like that. And they had gone into the box. Now they didn't get into the gelatin, but they were in the box and that was enough for me. So um, I found that it's best packets and everything do need to, I want them in Tupperware because they hitchhike. And uh, so you don't want to, people say, oh, I just put my flour in the freezer. Oh, no, no, no. If they're in there, now you've frozen them and now you're going to eat them. Um, I go ahead and bring my flour home, put it in my Tupperware. I then check it the next day. And if I see all these little kind of um, flaky things on the top, those are weevils. So take that flour, put it back in a plastic bag or a, whatever you, kind of container you have, take it back to the grocery store and say, these have, th there's bugs in my flour. Here's my receipt. I just bought it yesterday. And can I get a new bag of flour? And, and 
they're usually pretty good to work with you. So uh, weevils are hitchhikers and they will come. Um, hopefully you don't have things like cockroaches, but they love the glue on the boxes. And so they go after all the boxes. And if you've got a cereal box, guess what? You could have bugs, you could have weevils, you could have whatever. And I'm not trying to gross you out, but it definitely is something that um, does happen in the kitchen. So I will post this for you and you can, they live, cockroaches live in all 50 states. Oh, yay. Okay. So, uh, but it talks about the different things and how you want to um, get rid of them or how Tupperware will help you uh, not have them become um, a residence in your pantry. And boy, I'll tell you what, you only have to get them one time. You'd have to take out everything. You, you throw away an enormous amount of food if you don't have your foods in Tupperware and uh, they call you quick and they get their pantries organized because they don't wanna go through that again. So that is absolutely wonderful. So I will get that posted for you. And so what do you need to do when you finish watching this video? Okay, so in the next seven days, five to seven days, I want you to do your own kitchen. I want you to get started with the graphing, get started with what you need. And, um, and of course our modular mates will be going on sale since it's December that I'm doing this video, they will be going on sale in January and you do wanna get them on order ASAP so that you can get started organizing your own pantry, but use what you already have, or maybe just bring up to date and finish organizing. Sometimes during the holidays, we tend to shove things into our cupboards and not put them away. So it's now's the time to get those things organized and get them back into modular mates. And, you know, when I come home from the grocery store, the boxes don't go in the pantry The box because I fill on top. Um, the boxes are, are, I fill immediately into the container and throw the boxes away. So those boxes never make it to my pantry. But I know when we're busy, sometimes it's easy just to throw, throw them in and say, I'll deal with that later. So get that pantry organized and then work with someone else about doing your own, their custom kitchen. So a family member, a good friend, a coworker, uh, maybe a customer that you've talked to about it and make sure that you talk about uh, custom kitchens with every demonstration that you do, particularly during the month of January when they are on sale, because this is our big sale for modular mates. It's kind of like the January white sales. I don't know if they still do those anymore, but they used to do those. And uh, it's like that big sale every year where they go on sale because we don't ever put the major portion of our, our modulars on sale like we do in January. And currently our sets are not in our catalogs. And so this is the only time when you can buy the products in, in, in sets as we currently offer them in our catalog in 2020. So, and go out and make your dreams come true. You know, custom kitchen planning is just a fun, fun, fun service to do. And then once the kitchen is done, date a show off party. Date a party with that hostess and let her show that party, off. let her show her covers off. She'll be so excited. It's like getting a new house. Look how organized I am. So it's absolutely wonderful. I hope this video has helped you. And uh, I hope that you will go out and make your dreams come true and that you will start customizing kitchens and make it a regular part of your business. Become a full service consultant doing both Tupperware demonstrations and custom kitchens. And once you do custom kitchens, then you can move on to freezers. Um, that's an evolution yet uh, that takes a little bit more time, but that's a whole nother demonstration. But I'd love to teach you how to customize and organize your, your freezers as well as your pantries. So thank you for joining me. I hope this has been fun. I hope it's been helpful. Talk to you real soon. Bye-bye.